JJ Fast started the whole company. NWA was active from 1987 to 1991. Easy E is a businessman, the co founder and owner of Ruthless Records. Dr. Dre was the producer for Ruthless Records. Jerry Heller was the manager of Ruthless Records. Him and Easy were business partners in multiple ventures. Jerry Heller was also the manager of Lonzo's World Class Wrecking Crew. That's how they met, and that's how Easy brought Jerry Heller in the picture. Priority Records had the most interest in NWA and the best deal out of all the companies that came at them. So Easy had his deal with Priority, and NWA assigned as a group to Priority. All of their money was in the same account. They all had the same lawyer. Easy E for show sure had another account. Like for show, sure, for show. Sure. But in 1989, Cube left Easy E, NWA, and Ruthless over royalties dispute with Jerry Heller and signed the Priority Records as a solo artist. And Jerry gets his cut of the money before it's even taxed. So Jerry get 20%, then it get taxed. Now, at the end of the year, NWA made the less, and Jerry took the most. And it didn't have to go like that, but NWA didn't know the business, you know what I'm saying? The manager's job is to protect himself and the company until they get fired. So now it's just Easy e Dr. Dre, DJ Yeller, and MC Rand. Now, we in 1990. Dr. Dre connects with their former bodyguard, Suge Knight. And Dre left the group at the peak of his popularity for disputes over contracts and finances. Of course, right? Mind you, they're all from the city of Compton. So, easy release Dre. He wasn't really tripping off Dre. The only problem is Dre was still technically a ruthless artist. As the story goes on, in 1991 is when Easy released the Niggas for Life album. And Dre is now signed to Death Row Records. So, this is how the beef started. When the Niggas for Life album came out, it sold like three million. The DOC pretty much wrote the whole album. He wrote all of Easy's raps and all of Dre's raps. The verses that they had left from Cube, they joined it along with the album. And Dre is being manipulated into thinking he's starting a record label by Suge the whole time. See, Dre, he just now becoming aware he doesn't know the business. And he damn sure didn't learn overnight. Suge has bodyguard for Bobby Brown. He already knows the procedures to recover a solo career after a group fallout due to contracts and finances. He's seen that with Bobby Brown in New Edition. But what Dre did was go in the NWA account that all their money was in and took out a lot of money, like way more than he was supposed to take. They all got the same lawyer as a group, even though they had their own solo deals, same lawyer as a group, same account as a group. And that lawyer reached out to Easy and told him what Dre did. And Dre and the DOC left NWA and Ruthless Records for Death Row Records. And Dre got Suge lawyers involved looking at his contract. Now, Dre don't know, but at this time, this is when Suge decides to really take maximum advantage over Dre. Because he's reading that Dre ignorantly signed an agreement and that Dre signed on the contract and he signed on the extension which made Dre executive producer. Dre's producer credits is two points, then 2% in royalty. So Easy says, look, I negotiate a business deal with you. And if Dre agrees with the terms, he was going to let him go. Dre didn't agree. So Dre basically gets five cents per record and Easy was getting paid 80 cents off every record. The manager, Jerry Heller, he was getting 10 cents off the record. The manager is getting paid more than a producer. Dre signed as an artist and executive producer, but he signed the extension, which brings Easy into it. So whatever Dre does, rather rap or produce, Easy gets paid. That's why E said Dre Day only makes Easy's payday in a real motherfucking Compton City G's disc. So you got Dre being manipulated by Suge, but behind Suge is Jimmy Iovine of Interscope. Dre and Suge is building Death Row. Dre produced Snoop's album, Doggy Style. Dre's album, The Chronic, The Dog Pounds album, and Easy e is getting paid off all of it. And those verses on The Chronic, Dre rapping, but the DOC wrote them. So Easy still getting paid off the DOC. He got Dre the Gangsta, Bone Thugs, and Harmony. So Ruthless Records is basically being built by Death Row Records at this point. 
That's how Ruthless Records versus Death Row Records beef started. The golf course fight between the two and Daz and Corrupt calling Ruthless Radio disrespectfully, which led up to Suge Knight extorting Easy e By setting up a meeting and Suge's crew brought some weapons but no guns and no knives, but they never laid a finger on E. Instead, they threatened him and mentioned his mother's address, so Easy signed and took Suge to court right after he did it. And him signing out of extortion, that made it as to where legally not now only Easy gets paid off of Dre as a producer and as an artist, Easy now gets paid off of whatever Dr. Dre and Suge Knight does as a whole. And that's how the year of 94 gets wrapped up. 1995, Easy has 11 children now. In case you don't know, marriage is a business. It's a slave contract. In business and contracts, Easy E knew like the back of his hand. And Easy was single at the time. And as for Tamika, they were not on good terms. Easy wasn't with Tamika before he died. And he took care of all his kids until he died. And Easy E didn't die broke like in the movie either. Easy was eating in abundance. And Jerry didn't work for Easy before Easy died. Easy fired Jerry for the same thing, contracts and finances. Jerry tore the group apart, and now it's the industry versus Easy E. Jerry and Jimmy Iovine worked out the contract between Easy, Suge, and Dre over the extortion case, and Easy is suing the both of them and found out they was locked in for the whole time, and that Jimmy and Jerry could have stopped it before it turned into an actual and physical beef but did it. They were plotting to kill Easy for some time now. So Jimmy brought the idea to Death Row of mentioning Easy E has AIDS in the skit on Daz said on Snoop's first album, Doggy Style, in 1993. And Jimmy Iovine and Jerry had their dark elite friends pay interviews to ask Easy those AIDS related and sex related questions to point the fingers at Death Row and blame it on AIDS. Easy was taking money from Jimmy and taking money out of Interscope as well. Easy was smart as fuck, but the smartest thing Easy E ever did was turn from his devilish ways and turn to the Most High God. Despise him in Bone Thugs, devil worship involvements, and other known facts like often playing with Ouija boards. Easy actually repented and revealed the dark agenda and how the ones who run the entertainment industry works for the people who run the world. He mentioned this in his secret message and audio on the Bone Thugs East 1999 Eternal Map. On the inside of the album cover, there's an eternal map and leads you to a phone number. You call it in this message plays of Easy e speaking on the dark stuff that's going on and warning us. He was suing Jerry and Jimmy Iovine. There's a rumor floating around Dr. Dre and Easy e had the same doctor. Well, it's true because Jimmy Iovine and Jerry Heller get paid from the same people and they poison Easy e The plan was to kill Easy since 1993 because he was a hell of a businessman and he was on his way to own most of the music industry. And on his hospital bed, Jerry got Tamika to marry him before he died so he could still have some control of Ruthless Records at the end. Tamika decided to part ways with Jerry. Jerry sued and he won money from Ruthless Records. Bone released the album East 1999 Eternal Map. 1999 is 666 Upside Down. Easy discovered Bone Thugs in 1993. And that's what they was on at the time. I'm glad... And that's what they was on at the time. I'm glad Bone has stepped towards Say So on the album part taking the inside album cover. It was too late to change the front cover. He had been killed. So they couldn't remove the 666 from the title. So they made it to where the eternal map on the inside led you to a phone number. And when you call it, you hear Easy's last secret message. I own that album. I've called that number. And it was Easy's message through Bone Thugs and Harmony to us to get on a track to eternal life. So that's how Easy E was killed. Jerry tore the group apart. Then Tomika pushed everybody away, all Easy E artists. And none of the women that dealt with him contacted AIDS. None of his children have AIDS. Before you get AIDS, you have to get HIV first. You cannot go from AIDS. Excuse me, you cannot go from tired. You cannot go from 
HIV to full-blown AIDS, not even in six months. It don't work like that. So, and the movie was fake as fuck. You can't fit 30 years into two hours. The original movie was four hours, but yeah, man. That's the truth of how easy he was killed.